welcome to paints and glitter my name is Raquel and I welcome you to my channel this is a 3d acorn assembly tutorial the file is from silhouette design studio and I will go ahead and leave a link of the number down below so that if you're interested in making this file you can follow along of course the video is sped up but you can definitely play it a little bit slower if it's to your liking before I forget, I do invite you to subscribe to my channel if you're new here. Hit the like button if you enjoy 3D crafts, card making, and mini album tutorials. That's what I share on this channel. And uh, here I'm going to explain the file cuts uh, two separate types of pieces there that are in that V shape. The smaller one that you're seeing me ink on the edges is cut out in green but you could definitely cut this out in brown and then i've cut out this larger portion with this kind of peachy tone color that i knew that i could go ahead and uh, ink with the brown ink that i used and that was distress oxide ink by ranger what i'm doing there as you can tell is with a bone folder i'm just going through and starting to break down the fibers of the cardstock because Anytime that you do fold paper, you want to break down the fi fibers a little bit so that it doesn't crack. Even if you don't intend on uh, folding it uh, per se, it's just a great idea. I am also using Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive. It is my favorite glue and I'll link that below. If you've never tried it, I'd highly recommend it for 3D crafts because it gives a secure bond onto any type of paper that you might be using and even other materials so here what i'm doing is that i'm going uh, piece by piece here and this is all going to go together but what i like to do is to take two pieces out of t at a time and then apply the pressure onto the little tabs that you saw me fold and of course those are all mountain folds and that means you're folding all away from you and then you see me manipulating the paper, bending it a little bit. And the machine, the Silhouette Cameo, will cut into the paper all of the little score lines. So you don't have to worry too much about that. It makes it a lot easier to follow as well. And then, as you can see here, once the two pieces or the little pairs, you have three pairs of, of two, once those are dry, then I pick up each one and it helps with the assembly because then it's easier to grab the two pieces at a time rather than one at a time, at least for me. That's just my personal preference. This bottom piece here, uh, you do have to hold because then the more papers you have that you're trying to fold or uh, add pressure to, the more the paper will pull away because there's just a little bit more weight to it so just be patient hold on to one edge and you can see me there manipulating it um, but hold on to it for a little bit until the adhesive dries and it'll be a lot easier to assemble now the interior portion here all you have to do is fold it and then glue those little tabs it's going to give a little bit of um, more sturdiness to this little box and then the outer portion of that tab actually folds back up because that's going to create the little lip inside of the box and this is another uh, portion that will take a little time to dry you can certainly use hot glue if that's something you're more comfortable with but i did use the nouveau adhesive here as well as i've mentioned in other videos these 3d tutorials are free for you but if you would like to support my channel then of course you can use the affiliate links down in the description bar of my videos and that'll be a great way just to say that you enjoy my content and also allow me to bring you better content on this channel. So I thank those of you who do use my affiliate links. It means a whole lot to me and of course the price of the items that you purchase does not change. So the little rim there that I uh, added to the interior lip of that little box was um, in a light cardboard or craft card stock and that was just to give it some sturdiness of course and it does cut out I'm sorry as part of the file now 
This is the upper portion of the little acorn or the lid of this box. And what I recommend here is that you pay attention to the little slits that cut into this paper because you want to alternate. And what you're going to do is make sure that you grab a piece of the die cut piece or, or pre-cut piece here, one that has a little notch and one without. So it alternates. And the little notch that I'm referring to is actually on the tip of this piece of paper not the one that's clearly visible in the video here it's more toward that very narrow tip on top and hopefully that makes sense but of course if you do have any questions leave them in the comments and i'll be happy to respond but i am alternating those and it's going you're going to see why in a minute but it's following the same process as before just adding the adhesive to the little tabs and then adding the next little portion of what will be the uh, the cap or the lid to this acorn box and as I said prior you can definitely cut this out in a dark brown I just happen to like this color green green is uh, just a color that I enjoy and I also will be layering on top of this green base uh, decorative paper by Minte. So I'll leave a link for that as well if you're interested in that paper collection. It's absolutely stunning and I have several other projects with the same paper collection and it is double-sided so it will also lend a little bit of weight or sturdiness to this. So I'm setting that aside and now I am grabbing what will be the stem of the little box and it also has just all of those little tabs and they fold right underneath the little hexagon portion so all you have to do is press and I try to press from underneath the paper once it makes contact and also make sure that all of those angles are absolutely straight that's really important to make sure that this fits correctly and it looks so adorable once it's done you'll see in a minute so Again, just be patient when you're creating 3D projects. It is time consuming. I did time myself while I was recording this video and this little acorn took me just under an hour to assemble. It's not that it was difficult, but I wanted to make sure that everything fit correctly and I didn't want to rip the paper. And here you see, for instance, I used that little knife blade to kind of push in the little notches that already cut out with the machine but I just like to add a little more w wiggle room in there and once I inserted that little portion of paper which was just three little slots then I used my tool there to apply pressure and glue it with hot glue and it's a little bit fiddly I recommend that if you're going to cut it as is, meaning the same size as the file comes in, that you use good quality paper because the slits and all of that, they're going to be rather small. When this is all assembled from top to bottom, it'll measure just under six inches and it's not very big. So if you want to make a larger acorn, you definitely can do so. If you're not familiar with the Silhouette Studio program, you can resize these items and make them quite large. So it is a wonderful centerpiece for a party or you could um, give it away as little goodie bags, if you will, for a party um, or just use it to decorate um, with little bits of uh, potpourri inside or some scented beads so the sky's the limit i mean the use of these types of things is not just the whimsy and cutesiness of it but you can definitely use it as part of your home decor here this little band as you see is the portion that goes right on the perimeter of this lid and it'll make sense in a minute as to why but it does have the tabs that fill or fit into the wider slits at the bottom and what you see me doing is applying hot glue and then kind of adjusting those little tabs so that they stick on the inside. And the reason this is a bit more fiddly for me is because of the strings of the glue gun. But that's something that if, you, if you've if you ever used a glue gun, you know, it just comes with. 
um, but it has these little tabs on the side and then of course those just join one strip to the other and now you have this portion that is yet another hexagon and that's going to fit right onto the tabs that were on that um, portion there so again it all fits precisely and then the tabs that were left on the very edge will now fold down and that's going to help you create that lid so more glue and then some gentle 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 pressure will help you adhere that top portion and this is going to become a lid of course but what you don't want to do is you don't want to push too hard on this bit here I would say this is probably the um, do or die portion of this assembly and that's because if you squeeze it too hard your lid is going to buckle so I would apply gentle pressure and it's a little bit deceiving to see a faster video but that's just my advice and then those little protruding tabs now will fold over onto themselves and I did fold them first so so as to make this uh, video a little bit faster but you see me applying more hot glue and then just kind of pinching them and removing the strings the rest of this is going to be purely decorative the leaves that you saw me inking in the beginning of the video will go on to this as well but then to cover that little hole is uh, another hexagon fits beautifully and now you see how this will fit inside of the little box now one of my edges tore a tiny little bit but I'll be covering that up as I always do um, and here is the decorative portion this cuts out and it almost looks like a little scallops it uh, reminded me of fish scales but this is a really pretty portion of this um, this little box and I highly recommend that you use it it's going to give it a really pretty finished look and of course you could layer that as many times as you like because the silhouette studio also gives you the opportunity to kind of fiddle with the designs a little bit so if you want to take away those little scales um, I'm calling them scales but it's just those little scallops you can definitely hide those in the um, in the design studio or just leave them as is and I think they're super cute and of course the burgundy paper is more of a fall color and that's why I decided to do that green uh, base and then the layer in that darker burgundy but you could do it in the opposite manner it's all up to you and once those are adhered that's the end of the assembly of the actual box and the design also comes with these little twirly bits is what I'm calling them and they're so absolutely adorable so yes of course I wanted to use that I just thought it was super cute and then I also wanted to use the two leaves but you could decorate this to your heart's content but I do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial as you can tell I'm just adding the layers to the leaves and they'll, then I will add them to the box but I do appreciate any feedback and any comments that you might have regarding this project or any others on my YouTube channel if you have any questions I welcome them as well and I do appreciate your time and having spent some time with me today watching this tutorial if you want to share it with a friend I would appreciate that as well at the end of this video I'll be adding some pictures of the finished piece and that way you can see how I will decorate it here I'm just adding a little band-aid I just cut a strip of paper and that way it'll cover up my little notch there that separated a little bit but that's just how I go about fixing any little um, errors just add an embellishment <laughs> but I hope that you've enjoyed the video and I invite you to come back to watch more be inspired and be blessed bye bye